Okay. <clears throat> All right. It seems like we can probably go ahead and start this thing. Let's see here. Get the window. Okay, I am recording. Let me get the side now. Okay, maybe not. Anyway, so yes, welcome you guys. This is week two. Okay, we learned a lot in week one. Week one was all about what is a network. I'm gonna just click on, actually, let me click on what is a network. And, you know, we talked about a lot of things. We talked about the basics of a network. We talked about IP addressing, both V4 and V6. We worked a little bit in the command line. We talked about wireless principles, right? Wi-Fi, virtualization. We even built um, a VM, right, with Oracle. And we used the OS. Maybe some of y'all probably use Windows, but we use Kali um, Linux. So that was pretty cool. Switching concepts, we talk about, you know, how switches switch traffic, you know, how they transmit data. Um, and we did a little studying and the studying was just going back and building that virtual machine. So if you haven't built that virtual machine, I definitely suggest you go back to that video, um, to that lesson and, uh, you know, do a little, do a little lapping, especially with Kali Linux is, it's something you could definitely add to your resume now and, you know, get to working with it. So that's pretty interesting. So this week, we're talking about accessing the network, okay? Um, let me, let's go to the syllabus really quick and let's look at the exam topics. And uh, we can restore maybe, okay. And just looking at the topics, let's see. So we talked about network fundamentals. We talked about, okay, topologies, TCP, UDP. We talked about a lot, Mac learning and aging. So really you guys should be able to go to this exam topics list and literally like cross off. You should go here and be like, okay, so explain the role and function of a net of network components. So explain the role and function of routers. If you can't explain the role and the function, then don't cross it out. You need to go back and learn and explain the role and function. But if you can do that just by saying, okay, well, your routes, IP traffic, layer three traffic, that's what routers do. Cross off, right? Layer two, layer three switches. Layer two, you know, routes, MAC addressing. Layer three is a switch that routes IP addressing. So it does both L2 and L3 um, routing. So boom, you know, next generation firewalls and IPS, right? And so just go through the whole thing. If you can't, um, you know, describe the characteristics by crossing it out, definitely go back. Do not continue on until, you know, you have a solid understanding. So this week, as you can see, network access Today, we're gonna to be talking about VLANs, right? Virtual local area networks, okay? Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about why it's important, how you access the network, and a little bit of configuring. Now, as you can see in this section, they actually want you to configure and verify VLANs, right? Configure and verify inter-switch connectivity. So yes, we will learn about what it is, but the sole purpose is for you to be able to configure this, right? Know the commands on how to create a VLAN, right? We're gonna create an access port for data and voice, create a, um, we will identify the default VLAN and the connectivity, how do VLANs connect? We'll talk about trunk ports. We'll talk about the standard 802.1Q and then native VLANs, right? Um, and then at the end of this, you guys should be able to configure all of this. This is what you would do as a network architect, okay? Um, network engineer as well, senior network engineer. They definitely wouldn't um, probably trust a young engineer uh, to configure anything on the router or the switch, but that's okay because we have those skills and we're gonna do it and we're gonna be marketable. So let's go back in here and let's talk, actually I have it brought up here, yes. So let's talk about 
Hold on, let me move this out my way. Let me move that out my way. Okay. Um, so before we get started, oh, I stopped sharing. Before we get started, do anybody have any questions, comments, concerns about, you know, anything from last week or anything moving into this week? I want to share something. Um, so today um, I was at work and I had to train um, this older gentleman and um, I told him I needed to get off work by a certain time because I had computer science class. And mm -hmm. I said, by any chance, do you know anything about that? He was like, actually, I do. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. He was like, yeah, I've retired from that field. And he told me what his title was. I was like, oh. So mm -hmm. we went to the coffee shop and he said, all right, here's my thing. When I used to interview people with bachelor's degrees, he said, do you know that they couldn't even tell me how information gets from one server here in Virginia <clears throat> to a server in Las Vegas? He said, so tell me how would it get there? And I was able to kind of get it, but he broke it down in this very simple way. And I want to share it with you just so you can confirm it. I want to make sure I have it right. Definitely. <clears throat> so he basically said, if you're sending an email, <clears throat> from let's say, let's say Centera Health Services and you work for their company and you're at their Virginia office, but their <clears throat> server is in Las Vegas. He mm -hmm. said that it would go from you sending the email to the, uh, is it the router? <clears throat> no, I'm sorry, what's the other one? Uh, it's the, you go through the server first and then it goes through the router. Okay. And then after the router, uh, it goes to, uh, oh my God, I, I'm so confused already. But he was saying that it goes through the server okay. first and then the router. That's like the first step. <clears throat> um, in a sense, in a sense, yes. You'll have like your computer, right? Um, and you will type oh, I'm up. Sorry. You'll type up, yeah, yeah, you'll type up your email and your computer will make, you know, the packet and it'll go to a switch. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. It goes yeah. through the switch and then the router. Correct. And if you have security, it'll go through the switch, then security, and then the router. This can be a firewall or mm -hmm. <clears throat> this can be a firewall, right? And then once it goes to the router, It'll go through multiple other routers, right? Uh -huh. That's probably interconnected. And then it'll go to that network, which is back from a router to a switch and then to the computer. Computer, yeah. And he was saying that people with degrees couldn't even break that down for him after they graduated. He's like, I can't give you the job. He said, that's just very basic information. He said, you can know all the definitions you want to. He said, but I want to know, do you know the basic concept of how this thing works? Exactly. And I was like, oh, okay. So yeah, I just wanted to share that with everybody. If anyone was having difficulty just understanding the basics of how this thing moves. Because I know mm -hmm. sometimes we make it harder than it really is. I know I do when it comes to learning. I make it so difficult when it's really not. Right, right, right. No, definitely. Um, and that is definitely a, a good gym because I have uh, worked with a lot of um, people that are my age that have graduated college, graduated computer science, they have their bachelor's degree, even their master's in computer science. And they honestly cannot tell me anything about <laughs> how data moves through the network. And it is pretty, it is interesting. I always figured that was interesting because it's like you spend almost, you know, four, five, almost six years in college, you should at least be able to, you know, confidently speak to how data travels through computers, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, right. But um, that's definitely not the case. And uh you know, I've, I've definitely been helping people that, you know, have degrees in computer science to get where I'm at without a degree, you know, so it's, it's definitely an eye opener and it definitely should, you know, help you guys with your confidence to know that, hey, I don't have to go to school for this. Like, I don't have to go to school to be an engineer, right? So, or an architect, right? You just need to know the basics. You need to know how to talk to it. And you need to know how to troubleshoot it. Every, the whole thing is, can you help me solve a problem? I don't care what your background is. I don't care how good you can talk about this technology. Can you help me solve this problem? You know, so if I'm and the biggest problem is quality, quality um, of service. 
So uh, every and almost every big network is like, oh, my net, my 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 phone call is a little choppy. Or when I get on the internet, sometimes it takes you know ten seconds instead of the five seconds, or whatever the case may be, is something with connectivity, you know, that that gets us. And um, that's what we have to fix. And we have to figure out what's going on. Where's the bottleneck? And that bottleneck can be in the router. It can be in the switch. It could be in one of the computers, you know? And with even with the one switch, you got so many different layers. You got VLANs, you got interfaces, you got so many things you can look at. Um, so yeah, it's really, um, can you solve, can you help us solve this problem? So that was, that was a really good gem. So thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. For sure. Um, so yeah. Uh, so Leah, let's move on. So we're going to be talking about VLANs, right? What is a VLAN? A VLAN is a virtual local area network. We already know what LANs are, a local area network. You know, a LAN is your local area network where, where you, you're probably on, you know, in your home office um, or, you know, at your home and you're in your LAN. You can route traffic with you know, users or other devices that are in your network, you know, that's switching layer two traffic. Now, if you decide to leave your LAN, you will have to travel over a WAN, a wide area network, which means you'll have to travel via the quote unquote internet. The internet is just a bunch of networking devices connected together to speak to each other. That's all the internet really is. But when we're talking about the internet in an engineering sense and in a network engineering sense, we're talking about it in a sense of a whole bunch of routers connected to each other using different protocols, um, you know, switching traffic so we can get data to each other. Now, once we get into routing, you'll kind of get a more sense of the internet. It's a protocol called BGP, um, Border Gateway Protocol. And it basically is like the pro internet's protocol, right? It's that protocol that the internet uses, which is most of all the devices in the world to connect to each other, right? Um, because at the end of the day, it's still uh, physical. It's still cables and routers and switches all being interconnected. So if I wanna talk from Houston to Paris, I'm, my data is traveling through the ethernet cables all the way from Texas to Paris. It's just, that happens in less than a second, you know? But anyway, so virtual local area, net, local area network. Now, what does the VLAN do? Why do we need VLANs? Why do we need to virtualize a LAN? Because it segments broadcast domains so that not every host on the network receives a specific broadcast. So when you're on one LAN, when you're on one LAN, and the device sends out a broadcast. Every device on that LAN will get the broadcast. So every LAN is a was what we call a broadcast domain, a domain where broadcasts happen, where everyone can receive a message. If one device sends out, again, a broadcast, every device in that LAN will receive it. So the purpose of VLANs is to segment that broadcast domain so we can have different land, uh, lands uh, logically, you know, not necessarily physically. So for instance, if we are in a school and the school is its own, we can say um, like, a like a campus, a can, uh, but we can also call it its own land, right? And let's say the teachers wanted to brass, uh, broadcast out, you know, a teacher's announcement, right? Or a, the principal wanted to broadcast something just for the teachers. Um, if they were all just on one lane, land, then the students and other faculty members and guests and everybody that's connected to the network will receive that broadcast, what could be sensitive information. So instead of having it all one land, we decide to use VLAN. So the teachers can have their own broadcast domain. So if they want to shout out something, only the teachers will get it. Then we can have a broadcast, a VLAN for just the students. So if the students want to shout out something, it'll just go to the students, right? And we can just keep separating that, separating it. So you can just think of it even as a business, like you got marketing department, you got the IT, you know, you got so many different departments that you don't want um, that information to be, you know, convoluted with a whole bunch of stuff. Because I mean, what we do in the engineering department, HR don't really need to know, or what HR does in their department, sales don't really need to know. So we need to separate that. And how do we separate that? We use VLANs. 
Okay. Another great thing with VLANs, it reduces traffic congestion. So obviously, if we're in the school and everyone's sending data, um, transmitting data throughout, is the 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 connection can get slow. We can take you know a minute to upload a web page, then that twenty seconds, and that's because we're all on one LAN. We're all in one VLAN, which was defaulted VLAN one. Uh, so we want to separate that. So we can reduce the congestion of the traffic. We can organize departments. And another great thing is security down here. It offers security. And like I just said, if you know sales is broadcasting financial reports, we definitely wouldn't want you know engineering or any of our contractors to know what that financial report is, right? <clears throat> so VLANs are very good. They separate our broadcast domains because the land is one big broadcast domain. So we want to separate that to organize, reduce traffic, and provide better security, right? It's just good engineering all, all the way around. Now, Cisco switches, they always have VLAN 1 as the default VLAN. So when you get a Cisco switch, it's going to be pre-configured with uh, the software, and that software will automatically have a default VLAN, which is called VLAN 1, okay? Now, um, you can't change, delete it. You can't do anything to this VLAN 1. It is mandatory and it has to stay there and it's needed for certain protocols like spanning tree. We'll talk about spanning tree uh, because I believe spanning tree is in week two. Um, we'll talk about spanning tree, which is a protocol that uh, is pre-configured on the switches, right? It's layer two protocol. Um, so native VLANs. Cisco switches also have native VLANs, right? Which is used to pass untagged traffic. So non-VLAN associated traffic to another peer switch. So when we create that pack, that frame, right? Because, you know, it's just encapsulated data. That's what a frame is. And that's basically what that encapsulated data also has our layer three data, which is our payload, which is our actual data, whether it's hello mom or email or, you know, a meme or whatever the case may be. That frame has a packet, which has that data in it. Now, also on that frame, will also have a VLAN tag. It will say what VLAN that the device came from, that that traffic came from. Did it come from VLAN 1, VLAN 2, whatever. Did it come from VLAN students? Like, who knows? But the frame is actually going to uh, show you, um, you know, where's the VLAN tag is at. Now, if the, let's say there's a computer that's not associated to any VLAN, we've created student VLAN, a VLAN for marketing, a VLAN for for teachers, the VLAN for all type of, of you know other departments, but this one computer is not a part of any VLAN, so it will use the native VLAN to you know uh, transmit traffic to wherever it needs to transmit to, which would be just to the next switch in line. Um, so, if if a device is not a part of a VLAN, it still can route traffic through a native VLAN, which we'll see more as we start configuring things. Okay, so the native VLAN is defaulted to VLAN 1, which you should change to an unused VLAN. So when you are, when you first get the switch, um, and again, most of the time when you go to some type of network, they already have everything pre-configured. You're just managing and monitoring what they already have. And, um, and you know, you're just going along with that. Now you may actually come into a sense where you are managing, you are monitoring and you see that, hey, some of your configurations could be better for security. Like the native VLAN is, act is VLAN one as well, which it shouldn't be because if there's no device that's attached to any VLAN, they can use the native VLAN to pass traffic. So what if, you know, Somebody just decides to just plug up their computer or, you know, some hacker decides to get in. They don't need to be associated to the VLAN. They could just use native VLAN 1. So what you would do is change it. Change it to VLAN 2, VLAN 3, something that you're not using. VLAN 99, I don't know. But definitely change it from VLAN 1. As we continue to do configurations and stuff, you'll see how this all makes sense. But as far as exam purposes, make sure you understand that the native VLAN is also defaulted as VLAN 1. So you have to change it to an unused VLAN. So please remember that this right here, because that is on the exam for sure. <laughs> um, Let's see, the de default VLAN is simply stating that VLAN of all ports belong. Okay, so again, it's just for, you know, um, native protocols like spanning tree, which we'll get into. 
Now, how we said. Hold up, just a question. Just to yes. make sure you said on the exam, just to remember, native VLAN is defaulted to VLAN one, and you always change it. Correct, and you okay. should change it. You should. Yes, you should change it to an unused VLAN. This this statement right here. Make sure you you have it down, and you understand that there is a default VLAN, which is VLAN one. Native VLAN is also defaulted as VLAN one but you have to change it to something else. So it can be VLAN one as the defaulted and then the native VLAN is something else. You have to make that distinction yourself. Okay, so that is a, an exam question for sure <laughs> because it's all about security. And as network engineers, we may not be security engineers, but we still have to know a layer of security, at least a layer of basic security, which is like this changing the native VLAN so you know um, we can see what's going on. No one can just ride on to untag with untagged traffic, right? Um, so this is this is good. Now, when I said uh, you can change it to an unused VLAN. Now the VLAN, you can, there's ranges and the range is from one to about 4,000. And you can say VLAN, well, you can't use VLAN one because it's already doubt. Um, already used. So you can say VLAN 2, VLAN 3, VLAN 4. You can number them as whatever number you want. You can even go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. You can even do Oz. Whatever you want to do, you can name it how you want. Just remember KISS, right? Keep it simple, stupid, okay? That is something that we all take part of in IT is with all these changes, all these configurations, we can do what we want. We're engineers. We are engineering the network virtually, you know, how we want traffic to go. So we want to keep it as simple as possible because as we start to scale, as more devices start to get added on, things start to get a little unorganized and it just gets crazy. So just keep it simple, right? So you can range it from one to a thousand to 1005. That's a normal range for VLANs. And it's stored in this VLAN.dat file in the flash memory. So when we was going back into the CLI and we was learning about like the dialogue startup, config startup, they talked about flash memory. So if you don't know what flash memory is, make sure you revisit that or simply just Google it. But also know that VLANs are stored in the VLAN.dat file. This is an exam question. Um, when you're in the field, they probably won't care to ask you this because you can Google it. It's really not that, that, that big of a deal. But as far as the exam, know that, right? Know where normal VLANs are stored. They are stored in a file called VLAN.dat on the memory of the switch, okay? Um, the range is important. Now, outside of this range, we have 1002 and between 1002 and 1005, that's a legacy range, right? Automatically created and cannot be removed is reserved for token ring and FDDI. Let me do this. Let's pull up here. Let's pull up my switch. Let's go to CLI and let me go here. Let's do switch. Let's do enable, um, maybe show VLANs. I think I could do show VLANs here because I'm in privilege exec mode. Yeah, so I can do that. So as you can see here, I did show VLAN and with show VLAN, we have the VLAN one defaulted. The status is active because you know it's the default V10. And everything is assigned to VLAN one, as you can see. All the ports that we have um, available on our switch is automatically assigned to VLAN one. All right. We also have um, VLAN two, three, VLAN 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. Remember when we went to where we at? the file here, and it says this, the legacy range automatically created and cannot be removed, reserved for token rings and some other stuff. As you can see, you see, these are legacy VLAN. So you can't name a VLAN any of these numbers because they already taken. Obviously they're already taken, right? But you need to know this for the exam. So what these mean, I don't know. I don't know what FDDI default. I know that a lot of these are like, you know, again, this is it's for the software um, in the switch. So it's the intelligence of the switch. But honestly, I don't know what, what all this is all for. So if you want to go for it and research it, that's cool. You know, more the merrier. But it wouldn't be on the exam. So we don't even have to go down that rabbit hole.
And then um, again, it just tells you more information down here. And then we haven't we haven't done anything else, which we will. So let's just keep going. Um, <clears throat> and then we have the extended range. So you can name VLANs 1006 all the way up to 4094. And that's usually used by service providers. So you'll never name a VLAN um, above 1005 unless you are, unless you were a service provider, unless you're one of them. Um, so kind of, I wouldn't say kind of, definitely remember the VLAN ranges for exam purposes. They're gonna ask you what's the standard range. They're gonna ask you what's the legacy range. Well, they're probably gonna ask you a, a combination of one of these, right? So definitely know the difference. Standard, I always know that it's up to 1005, right? And then 1006 and up is for service providers. And then there's a middle part of legacy range. Honestly, I probably wouldn't remember, but I think you guys should remember because it's an easy question. Please don't get it wrong, right? We want to get easy questions right. So remember this. This is a good for like flashcards, honestly. Um, okay, moving along, right? So we talked about VLANs on a switch. So let's talk about modes on a switch. There are two modes on a switch. We have access mode and trunk mode. Access mode allows a single VLAN, which are generally connected to end devices like hosts and printers, right? So let me come here. Maybe this is a good, uh, this is a good, can I blow this up a little bit? Okay, cool. So at, there's two modes, access mode and trunk mode. So you see access mode. Access mode means that it's one-to-one -one connection, okay? So usually it's a switch connected to like a host device. So there'll be this switch and instead of this being a switch, it'll probably be, I mean, it could be a switch, but it can also be a, um, a computer or a server or, you know, a host device, anything that's an end device, okay? That's the access port. Now a trunk port, as you can see, is, is usually between two, um, like two switches. And that's to uh, put, combine these two VLANs together. So they can have one port, one line of transmission for both VLANs. So trunk ports connect more than one v VLAN together instead of having you know, a whole bunch of access ports. Because let's say you have 10 VLANs, are you gonna set up 10 access ports or would you just like to do, just trunk all the 10, 10 uh, VLANs together and have them transmit over one logical line? That wouldn't have anything to do with like congestion if it, if it was like that though? If it was like, say that again, congestion? Yeah, if, it, if you said you had 10 VLANs and it's all going go, all getting trunked, that wouldn't affect like the speed and all that? Um, it wouldn't because it's that's what the trunk put is for. It's for you to connect that. So it's bundled together. Um, the traffic will, it's basically a logical, it's a logical sense, not necessarily like, um, like in a physical sense, right? So with the traffic being separated in its own VLAN and they come together in the trunk, uh, the switch is has that intelligence to, you know, filter what needs to go through. Um, because at the end of the day, it's still, you know, it's still like one by one, you can say, right? Um, it still will operate the same behavior if you get what I'm trying to say. You understand? So, it's not, it's not gonna, it's not gonna have any type of congestion because that's what the trunk port is for. The trunk port is for you to quote unquote trunk the ports. You're supposed to connect the, the VLANs together to be able to, you know, have that seamless transmission, line of transmission. I got you, I got you. You got it? Okay. So um two modes, access mode and trunk mode, which we will configure. Um We'll configure both, right? Uh, yeah, I'm not, I was gonna probably have you do a lab, but we'll configure both. So like I said, access mode, make sure you know the two modes, exam. Uh, access mode allows a single VLAN. Trunk modes allow multiple VLANs. Um, access modes are connected to um, end devices, right? Trunk modes are connected to other switches. So like we have in this other example, as you can see the switch and the switch, 
they have to be trunked together because they're two switches, right? And that's what they're for. They're for, you know, trunking the VLANs between network equipment. As far as access point, again, maybe this is a little misleading, but this access point, this uh, should be here. This should be a computer, right? A personal computer or a end device, whatever, you know, whatever you wanna call it. So that's the best way for you to remember it. That's the easiest way, at least for me. Access ports connect from switches to end devices. Trunk ports connect from switches to switches. You know, or it can be a switch to a router, but it's network equipment, other, you know, network equipment. As far as access points is to switch to an end device. Okay, I'm gonna switch to an end device, an end device. That's the easiest uh, way to remember it. At least, again, for me, that was the easiest way to um, decipher access ports and trunk ports. Okay, um, let's go to, let's go here. Hold on, let me move this out the way. Let's go. Now, <clears throat> we're talking about VLANs. The biggest thing you wanna understand is 802.1Q. Now remember, we're gonna learn IEEE standards of the wall, okay? Certain ones that should be embedded in your head. Like the number one is 802.3. If y'all can't understand, if you don't know, when I say 802.3 and it doesn't automatically register to ethernet, you should yeah, probably, probably. yeah, yeah. You should probably go back to the drawing board. 802.11 automatically wireless. Right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. If that doesn't automatically register, you got to go back to the drawing board because these are the things that is going to make or break your exam because they're easy questions, but they're everywhere. <laughs> and if you don't understand these little ones, then again, it's just uh, an exam down the waist. So 802.1Q, .1Q for short. It is a way to tag VLANs on an ethernet frame. It is four bytes long, okay? It is an IEEE standard used for switches to communicate layer two VLAN information between each other. It is an open standard and not just Cisco proprietary. So when you see 802.1Q, that's not a Cisco thing. It's a networking thing. It's a standard, it's an open standard. So. Again, 802.1Q is just for us to tag, is VLAN tagging. It's a way for us to tag VLAN information. So again, our data is being organized because we know exactly who it came from. Not only do we know the MAC, the sort, the MAC, the IP, um, the data, but we also know what VLAN it came from and what VLAN is going to, okay? And it's four bytes, right? Four bytes, got this information. 802.1Q. Dot one Q for short, we're gonna start configuring. Now uh, talking about, oh, okay, link layer, I didn't know this was in here, but we can go on. Layer two link protocols. Now we talked about VLANs, we talked about trucking protocols, right? We talked about ports, switch ports, whether they're access or they're trunk ports. Now we're gonna talk about, cause we're still in layer two, protocols on the layer two level outside of that. We have CDP, Cisco Discovery Protocol, and we have LLDP, Link Layer Discovery Protocol. They're the same protocols. One is just Cisco proprietary, the other one is open standard, okay? So when you're working on a Cisco device, a layer two Cisco device, you're always gonna use this acronym. Now you may use this too, you can, but anywhere else you'll use LLDP, okay? And obviously CDP says Cisco. Now, what are these protocols? They are exactly what the name implies. They are discovery protocols. They are used to discover the network. It right here, it is essentially a data link where it learns and discovers everything about a neighbor that is connected. Okay. So if you are, and what's crazy is uh <laughs> we had to use these at Ashton to play network discovery. So when you are new and, um, you know, you just got onboarded as a network engineer, and most of the time, believe it or not, a lot of companies, a lot of enterprise companies do not have up-to-date documentation on their network. Um, 
So a lot of things are not up to date. So they may give you documentation on here's these switches and this and this side and here's the you know network, here's the layout, here's the design that may not be the most up to date design because things has changed. You know, maybe they did merger acquisition or maybe a lot of things happen. Who knows? But again, documentation is 80% of the time not updated. So what you would have to do is be the engineer that you are and kind of do some discovery. So let's say you're looking for this switch and or this type of network equipment. You're like, what is this connected to? What's going on? And no one can tell you. And they gave you the documentation. You still can't read it or whatever the case may be. You can use these protocols to see what that device is connected to. How can you get in the device? And just, you know, again, just more information. It's going to help you, like I said, troubleshooting and documenting the network. Uh, we'll learn these commands. But... For now, definitely make sure you understand that CDP and LLDP are discovery protocols, right? They do the same thing. One is Cisco proprietary, one is open source, and it just discovers um, the neighbor, discovers the device's neighbor. Whatever the device is connected to, it will show you every single thing the device is connected to, okay? Now, configurations, we talked about all of these things. These are all the configurations you should know. When I first started, I literally copied these configurations and had them in like a sticky note. And anytime I had to apply a VLAN or set up a VLAN or name it or change a native VLAN or verify VLANs, I could just go to my sticky note and just look at the syntax. So um, again, this is in your Notion. Um, under VLANs PDF. So I think that you guys should do the same thing, <laughs> copy it and use it as a reference. You're going to be doing this so much that it's going to be like, oh, okay. Um, I know how to do this. I don't have to always reference it. And again, for the exam, you kind of want to remember some of these syntax, but for real life, you're going to always Google. Google, Google, Google. For labbing, all right, this is what I want you to do for lab is a basic VLAN configuration. We're going to, you're going to set up the lab look just like this, and you're basically just going to create VLANs, okay? And it tells you exactly step by step what to do, each type, each syntax. So you really shouldn't have too much of a difficult time. The only thing you should probably do is maybe Google certain words, certain terms, because you don't really understand the term. But this tells you exactly what to do. Exactly. Okay. So let's just pull up our, our lab here. I'm going to go into the switch. Let's do enable. And let's, uh, let's go here. And then what I want to do, let's do VLAN lab maybe. Let's do... Configurations, yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> so let's come here, can we scroll down? All right, so we enable, we in uh, privilege mode, so now we can do things. Oh, so we're gonna have to do in configure mode, so con FT, all right, as you can see here, con FT. So that means we're in configuration mode, we can start configuring things. So if we wanted to create a VLAN, right, we can, if we want to create you know, just a basic VLAN, we can say VLAN, let's say VLAN 2, just to keep it simple. And we're gonna say enter. So now since we created VLAN 2, we are in the VLAN 2 configuration line. So what do we wanna do with VLAN 2? Do you see switch config VLAN? And it's different from the previous line, switch config. Cause we're not only are we configuring, we're configuring this VLAN that we just created. So we want to name the VLAN something. Let's name it. So we're gonna say name and let's name it um, teachers, right? Enter. And then oh, we can just click, we can actually do, I believe it's just exit. We could do exit, go back to configuration mode. We can exit, go back to just enable mode and we can do show VLAN. And look at that, the VLAN we created, VLAN to teachers. That's how you create a VLAN and name it, simple, right? So now let's assign a, um, let's apply it to an interface. Let's see what interface we wanna apply it to. We can apply it to F, 
zero one. Oh, okay, switch. So now we want to go to config con ft, and we want to say we said we were going to do it on interface this interface fast Ethernet zero slash one. Now with the lab, you'll probably want to are we here yes. So you'll probably come up here. Let me see. And where's zero slash one? Is it zero slash one fast ethernet? I think so. And how would I know is I can go, as you can see, fast ethernet zero slash one is up VLAN one and the MAC address C601 is what it ends with. So I'm pretty sure this is what it is, you know. And I can even go to, this is fast ethernet zero. Yep. I can even go to desktop. And if I want it to be like fancy, I can go to the terminal. Hold on, let me move this because it's in my way. I can go to you know, the config. Where's my, um, my interface? Oh, this MAC address is ED37. Oh, it's fast ethernet zero. So let's come here and let's see where we at. We didn't send any traffic. So that's why it's probably didn't graph because it's just got the switches MAC address. Let me come up here. So this right here, that's fast ethernet. And what do we have here? We got, what's another up? O3. O3 is 602. Let's take a look. Fast Ethernet. Here's the Mac. Oh, not Bluetooth. So I guess we don't have it. I'm going to have to, just for my own sake. Okay, yes, it was over. I don't know why the Macs were different. Maybe I had to actually have to send the data through. Um, so yeah, that was 01. So let's go back in our switch and let's make, let's take that, let's take that. Let's go back into our switch zero. And um, so you see, I did some things. So these are system logs, right? Um, let me open that. System logging, as you can see, you see five, what is five? Notification, it's just telling me what I did. So anyway, let's come over here and I need my, uh, there we go, because I don't know the commands by heart. So I need a reference. Okay, so we're in configuration terminal and we want to apply a VLAN. So we're gonna do interface, interface, which you don't have to pull, you don't have to uh, type out whole interface. You could just do INT, but for exam purposes, spell it out. So we're gonna do interface, fast ethernet zero slash one. That was what we had, yes. So now we're in the interface. We're not only configuring, but we're in the interface. We're in the configuring interface, configuring the interface. Um, and now we want to apply a VLAN. If we're gonna apply one VLAN, what type of mode will we have it? We'll have it a access mode. So how do we create um, this interface uh, access mode? We would do switch port, switch port, Make sure you spell it right. Switch port mode. What does switch port mean? It is a port on the switch. That's all switch port is. They're saying that this port on this switch, we're gonna make this mode access, okay? That's all that is. How do you create an access switch, uh, access mode, access switch port? Switch port mode access. That's the, that's the command, okay? Enter. Now we put, switch port mode access, actually switch port access. See, that's why you need a reference because look, switch port access, VLAN, and what do what, what you think VLAN we're gonna add? VLAN two, because we just created that VLAN and we want to take our interface, um, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, I don't know why I just went out like that. But um, you can see uh, VLAN 2 because we just created that. We want to take it from VLAN 1, the default VLAN. So we're going to press enter. 
Okay. So then we're going to exit. And we're right here. We can probably do show. We can probably do a show command. Show VLAN. No, we probably can't do it. So we're going to exit. We're going to show the VLAN. Now, teachers, this interface, fast ethernet zero slash one, is now on VLAN two. So it will send data via VLAN two and all other uh, interfaces will send data on the default VLAN, okay? So now we created a VLAN, we named the VLAN, we assigned the VLAN, we assigned the interface to the VLAN, um, we verify the VLAN, show VLAN. You can even do show VLAN brief, which is good, show VLAN brief. And it gives you the same thing. I, oh, actually it doesn't. It gives you just a brief summary of the VLANs. As far as show VLAN, as you can see, it was trying to give me um, more VLAN information, probably VTP, DTP, all this other stuff, uh, which we don't have configured, so it couldn't show me any, any of that. But right here, it literally is only gonna show you a summary of the VLANs that's configured on the switch, okay? Um, <clears throat> you can remove and add VLANs, uh, access port, we already did that. Trunk port, same difference. Instead of, you're gonna say switch port mode trunk instead of switch port mode access, all right? And um, yeah, everything else is just like, oh, let's do, dot one Q maybe. Actually, that's good. I don't wanna to get too, too, too crazy. Um, next, tomorrow, we'll probably go a little deeper into inter-VLAN routing because I didn't know they had a whole bunch. So with inter-VLAN routing again, we'll, we'll do this tomorrow uh, because today I really want you guys to at least have a clear understanding of how to configure VLANs. Okay. Configure VLANs, put that on our put that on our resume, you know, on a on an intern type level. And um it could be a network admin, right? That's what network admins do. They configure and monitor VLANs all day. <laughs> so this can be a job for you. And it's very, very simple. Now it can get crazy because you can have up to 99 VLANs. But um you know, as long as you keep it organized, then you're good to go. So definitely do this lab here. Um, and then we'll move on, okay? If we go into Notion, uh, inter VLAN routing is here. I'm going to actually change it because I don't want to give y'all too much at one time. Um, so just pay attention to VLANs. And then when you go into your lab, just do your VLAN lab, okay? That should, and it shouldn't be really hard. It should be an easy, easy day one for week two for you guys. And then flashcards, you already know flashcards, okay? Um, and we're gonna stop there because I was, I just, again, I just want you to create access ports, create trunk ports, create VLANs and have them talk to each other, right? That's the ending goal of this, uh, of this lab is to be able to route traffic, okay? And if you have any questions, we can definitely either go over it tomorrow before we start our next lesson, which we'll probably do. We'll probably go over it through our next lesson. Um, but I want you guys to do it on your own, read the directions, pretty simple, and uh, we'll, we'll revisit it because I wanna see uh, you know, how you guys intake the information. Um, but yeah, outside of that, you guys have any questions, comments, concerns about VLANs or, or anything about what we got going on? Oh, that's fine. Um, yeah, I'm good to go. Thank you. Oh, oh, good, good, good. You're very welcome. Uh, so last thing I want to say is uh, as we continue on in this course, we will have, we have use cases and internships. So you guys want to add things to your resume for like an internship level, you definitely can. Uh, we're looking for all positions, right? You can do project management. So it's like IT project management. You can do, um, I mean, anything, tech writing, uh, whatever, you know, job you want to go out and get, 
we can, you know, create some type of position, some type of internship for you. So you can, you know, give some work, uh, some actual verifiable work to uh, technically speak in, have it on your resume. It's legit, it's verifiable, and you can go out here and actually start off with experience once you're finished with this course, right? Um, so if you guys have any, um, you know, if you want to work in anything like the project management, which that's the only thing I think we have open right now, um, tech writing and project management, if you're interested in that, just send me an email, reach out in Discord, Slack, wherever, and, you know, let's get you started. As you can see right here, how to build a VM. Um, we're looking for someone to tech write this uh, because I think my information is a little out of date. So I would like one of you guys to do it. If you want, we could put it here, say it's from you, put it on your resume, um, even probably put it up on the blog on my site. And uh, so you can always have it there. You can hyperlink it and, um, you know, become a tech writer, right? <laughs> Whichever way we can, can get you, you know, stuff on your resume, I'm down for it. So... Hey, Jessica, so when it comes to tech writing for the, the virtual machine, would that essentially be pretty much what we um, reviewed yesterday as we set up the Linux uh, program, I mean, OS system? Um, correct, exactly. This, this, the steps that you went through, you're just mm -hmm. going to write it in your own words. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, definitely reach out, some, uh, you know, submit your submissions, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm down to just post it. I can post multiples. So no fret, you know, the whole point is for you to guys to get experience while you're taking this course. So when you're done, whether you have your CCNA or you don't, you're still marketable to have more income than when you started. Okay. So. Yeah, I'm definitely interested. So um, you said project management and um, and tech, tech writing. writing. Yep, those are two things. I'll I'll have it posted over here. Um, I don't know. I okay. guess it didn't load. I'll post it up here so you can kind of see more of the um of what we're looking for, of what kind of like you know what you would be doing. Um, mm -hmm. but other than that, I mean, yeah, if you since you're since we're right here talking about it, you can definitely you know reach out, send an email, send me a private message in Discord, and uh we can we can get the ball rolling. You know, because technically speaking, we have projects all the time. So, you know, if I can have someone to help me project manage and you guys can get experience on how project management goes, because we're really doing like real life IT work. And, you know, for one of you guys to come in and just help manage a project, that would be great. You know, it helps me with lessening my management and it helps you guys with gaining experience. And even with tech writing, like, you know, I don't have time to really write every single step down. So if you can take some of this material that I have, or even take all this material that I have and just put it in your own words, tech write to it, and I can upload it to my site. And guess what? You have work, <laughs> you have experience. So, um, so yeah, again, get with me if you want and uh, we'll continue on. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. And uh, if you guys have no other questions, comments or concerns, see you guys tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow at 7? Uh, tomorrow at 7 p.m., yes. I will send out a notice if it changes. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. See you later.